The St. Vincent Grammar School took the top position in the 2010 Lions Club South Public Speaking Secondary Schools Competition, which was held last evening. The Georgetown Secondary School took the second position in the competition, which was held as part of the independence activities. Meanwhile, the St. Joseph's Convent Kingstown took the third position in the competition in what has been described by some as one of the most creative. It took place at the Methodist Church Hall in Kingstown. A number of other major activities are still to be held, including church services and the Independence Day Parade. Local Director of the Peace Corps Cuthbert James says one of the major issues in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is encouraging the youth to stay in school. However, the director says there is now, in addition, another new challenge for the youth. You have a new crop of youth that is coming on stream and, and I'm sure you, you're going to be amazed when you hear this because you hear talk about the education revolution, you hear talk about opportunities for young people in education. And every year you hear young, young people getting 9 and 10 and 11 subjects. Whereas in our days, you know, 5 and 6 subjects was, you know, the thing, you know. But you look around and you're wondering what is going to happen to those people who are so well educated. Knowing full well that our job situation can get saturated pretty quickly. So those are the, the next crop of youth at risk. Those people who have done well, have an education, but cannot find a job. James says the Peace Corps is responding to the challenges of the youth in a holistic manner. And one of the things is trying to, to, to encourage young people to create opportunities for themselves in entrepreneurship, small business, and those kind of things, you know? Because sometimes they don't think that way. They think as soon as I finish school, finish, I, as soon as I finish university, somebody should employ me. We do some small business and interestingly enough, the USAID is focusing on, on youth entrepreneurship this year as, as, as their, their funding focus. So we're, getting, we're going to get support for that. Um, the, the Center for Enterprise Development has requested some volunteers. We're going to try to see how we can assist them, you know. In, in, in going forward with that and to work with what is on the ground so it's not like Peace Corps bringing their ideas because we try to support what is on the ground already. Eleven new Peace Corps volunteers were officially sworn in earlier this week. Vincentians paused yesterday to remember the pioneers of the trade union and political movements here who fought on October 21st, 75 years ago for more representation in Parliament. Among them was Minister of Culture René Batiste who praised the work of George Augustus McIntosh, Bertha Mutt and others. The work of these Vincentians led to adult suffrage and more political representation. In a statement to mark the day, Minister Batiste encouraged students across the country to take time out to learn more about the riots and the people behind them. Minister Batiste was joined by Minister of Transport and Works Clayton Bergen to lay a wreath on the grave of the first Premier and first Prime Minister of this country, Robert Milton Cato, as a gesture of remembrance. The newly registered Raraku Development Council Corporation, RDCC, has made a small donation to the Argyle Airport Contributory Fund as a show of support for the International Airport Project at Argyle. The group, which was formed to promote community tourism in the area, handed over a check for $5,000 to the communications officer of the International Airport Development Company, Jennifer Richardson, at the Argyle Airport site last Saturday. Vice President of the RDCC, Vincent Benjamin, says the group sees the airport project as a, an opportunity for economic development in the area. The RDCC says the donation was the group's independence gift to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the development of the airport, and they hope to make additional contributions in the future. Anyone who wishes to make a donation to the Argyle Airport Contributory Fund can do so at the National Commercial Bank, account number 200884. Coordinator of the Windward Islands Farmers Association, Renwick Rose, says the call to grow more food in the region is just as important now as it was four decades ago. He was responding to recent statements by Antigua and Barbuda's Agriculture Minister, Hilson Batiste, 
who called for Caribbean nationals to grow more of their own food as a way of reducing the region's annual food import bill, which stands at four billion U.S. dollars. Mr. Rose says it's time to get the ball moving on reducing the food import bill and making the region more self-sufficient. The coordinator says a number of factors, including people's tastes, have to be taken into consideration as the region moves to reduce its dependency on food imports. Taking you across the region, officials say a suspected outbreak of cholera has killed at least 135 people in central Haiti. The Director General of the Health Department, Dr. Gabriel Timothy, says he was awaiting laboratory test results to confirm cholera was the cause. Officials say the victims suffered diarrhea, acute fever and vomiting. More than 1,500 people were infected. The outbreak is centered in the Artibonite and Central Plateau regions north of the capital, Port-au-Prince. That is it for our local and regional news. International news is up next.